Good morning, boys and girls. My name is Mr. Tim, and welcome to Children's Church for today, August 30th, 2020. And by now, most of you guys are back in school, whether that means you're at home by your computer or some of you are in school. Uh, so hopefully you've started off your school year in a good way. And whatever it is you're doing, however it is you're learning your things this year, I hope that you have a great year in school. Today we're going to find out about a great story that takes place in the book of Genesis. Normally when you just talk about the book of Genesis, your first thought is God created the heavens and the earth. And that's true. But today we're going to take that just a step further and talk about how God is Redeemer. And our story takes place at the very beginning of the Bible. In fact, in Genesis 1.1, probably the easiest verse in the Bible for you to find, isn't it? It's the very first verse. And it says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And in that beginning, a lot of stuff took place. If you took the time to read your, your Bible, the, all of chapter 1, you would find out that over the next six days, God didn't only just create the heavens and the earth. He set apart ground from sky separated waters from the dirt, created tree life and shrub life and plant life, brought about the sun and the moon and the stars, created life in the water and life in the sky with birds and, and fish. And then he finished up his, uh, on his sixth day with creating uh, animals such as livestock and wild beasts, and he created man. And that man, of course, was named Adam. And Adam lived in the most beautiful place on earth called the Garden of Eden. Now when we look at the Garden of Eden, you got to use your imagination. But if you've ever traveled someplace and you've just looked at something, maybe it's the Grand Canyon, or maybe you've been to another part of the world where it's just gorgeous, just beautiful, and you think, wow, this is so cool that God could create this. Imagine, the Garden of Eden was probably even more impressive than that. It was absolutely perfect. God created it that way and he filled it with animals, he filled it with life, he filled it with everything it needed, including Adam. And when he gave Adam the, the garden, he gave him one rule. Next slide. You see, when Adam went to look at the garden, he saw everything that God had made. And by the way, when God created the heavens and the earth, after he did his work each and every day, the Bible says that he looked at what he had done and it was good. And then on the sixth day when he created man, he looked what he had done and it was very good. Man is just so important to God. He wanted to create a, a human being and have a relationship with that human being. And so when he made Adam, he made him very special. He was perfect. And he had one rule to live by. God said, you have the entire garden to live in, to wander through, to enjoy. But there's one tree I don't want you to touch. Let's read this verse with me. It's out of Genesis chapter 2. And God, the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. Ooh, that sounds sort of ooh, bad. But you know what? I think Adam listened to God, took in what he said, and he thought to himself, That's an easy thing to do. I'll stay away from that tree. And life was going to be pretty good. Well, one of the first jobs that God gave to Adam was a really cool job. He said, Adam, I want you to name all the animals. Can you imagine that? Wouldn't it be fun? Now, when we walk around, we look at something, we're like, oh, that's a whatever it might be. In the beginning, when Adam saw these animals, none of them had a name. And it makes me wonder sometimes how he would look at something that was so tall with a skinny neck and say, you're a giraffe. Or something that was fat and plump and walked and waddled and say, you're a hippopotamus. How did he come up with some of these names? I don't know. And the question has to be asked, why did God give him that task? I think it's because God wanted man, Adam, to enjoy a relationship with God and he was helping him to understand what was going on, how the animals were all over the place, and it gave Adam a chance to talk with God. I wonder if some of the conversations didn't go like this. Well, what did you name your animals today, Adam? And Adam said, oh, I, I thought of the giraffe. And, and there's this thing called a, a snake and all these animals. And I imagine God just smiled and said, good job. It was a relationship. They were talking to each other. And then one day came and, and Adam had named all the animals. And he looked around and he saw that 
all the animals had a he and a she. And you know what? Some of these guys were having babies. And Adam thought to himself, I don't have anything like that. Well, the Bible says that God looked at Adam and he says, you know what? He needs a help me. He needs somebody to help him. So God caused Adam to go into a deep sleep. And when he woke up, to his great surprise, right beside him was the most beautiful woman, the only woman in the world. And when he looked up, there she was. And the Bible says that God made a woman and he named her Eve. And Eve and Adam were the first husband and wife in history. And you know what? I guarantee this much, at least for, I don't know how long they were together, but for the first bit, they never argued, they never fought, they never disagreed on what to have for dinner. They liked the same things on their pizza. Everything was cool because they were perfect. They were in a perfect relationship. They had never done anything wrong. And if this was the end of the story, it would be like, woo! And then the Bible would be about this thick because there wouldn't be a whole lot else to write about. But you know what? Something happened. That something that happened was one day, Eve was walking around the Garden of Eden. I'm sure Adam had shared with her the one rule that God had pointed out to him. Don't touch the fruit on that tree right over there. It's called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you do, we will die. I have to believe that Adam told her this. And I don't know how long it was, but she was wandering along one day and suddenly, out of nowhere, she heard a voice. And I'm sure she was looking around for the body but then she noticed that it was actually, a, the Bible says it was a serpent, a snake, who was talking to Eve. And in their conversation, the serpent asked this question, and we're gonna talk about it for a second, but let's read it first, will we? Can we? It's out of Genesis chapter three, verse one. This is Satan, who is the serpent, talking to Eve, and he said to the woman, did God really say, you must not eat from any tree in the garden? Now, do you notice that question? What was the one rule that God had given to Adam? He said, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but anything else you can enjoy. So when Satan asked that question to Eve, it got her thinking, maybe even confused a little bit, because did God say that you can't eat from any of the trees? Well, you know what? God didn't say that. God said you can't eat from that one tree. But Satan just took enough of the wording and twisted it just a bit. And Eve, you know, she started to doubt. What was it that God really said? And the Bible tells us that she then took some of that fruit. Oh, by the way, Satan also said this to her. He said, you know, if you eat this fruit, you're not really gonna die. You are gonna be just like God. Maybe that was what did it, I don't know. But Eve decided to take that piece of fruit and she ate it. What's that called? Do you know? Disobedience. She disobeyed the command from God not to touch the fruit on the tree. But here's the worst part. She went and then she gave Adam some fruit from that tree as well. And Adam took that fruit and he ate from it as well. And instantaneously, immediately, the Bible says that Adam and Eve both felt shame. They knew they had done something wrong. Let's read this verse out of Romans because it starts here in the Garden of Eden with the meaning behind it. It says in Romans 5 verse 12, it says, Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, who's that? That's Adam. And death through sin. If you remember what God said to Adam, don't eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil or you will surely what? die, right? Well, Adam didn't die that second, but his body began to decay, just like our bodies do today. And death entered the world because death came through sin. Let's finish the verse. In this way, death came to all people because all sinned. Wow. But it started with one bad decision way back in the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve chose to take that fruit and they broke God's law. And like I said, immediately they felt shame. They felt like, oh, we've done something wrong. They knew. They knew they were wrong. And so the Bible says they went and they, they found some fig leaves and they made themselves clothing to cover themselves. 
And that helped them feel a little bit better because they were just embarrassed suddenly. All of a sudden, they were embarrassed. And so they thought, we'll put some clothing on. But you know what? The next time God came through the garden to talk to them, something was different. You see, God came and talked to Adam all the time. He walked through the garden. He, I don't know what the sound was like. Maybe it was like a wind or a nice breeze, but Adam knew when God was there. And suddenly, now God's out there and, and Adam and Eve are trying to hide from God. Have you ever tried to do, hide from God? You know that's impossible, right? Because God sees everything. God knows everything. And he knew something was up, but he wanted them to talk about what was going on. And so when he said, what have you done? Adam had to admit that he and Eve had taken fruit from the tree they weren't supposed to. And God said, that's breaking my, my rule. You can no longer live in the Garden of Eden. But here's the cool thing, and this is beautiful. God saw that they were wearing fig, fig leaves, right? And that wasn't enough to pay for the thing that they had done wrong. And this is where God, as the Redeemer, starts to show up in the Bible. And it's a theme that goes all the way through, from Genesis all the way to Revelation. God is the Redeemer. What's it mean to redeem something? Have you ever gone to the grocery store with mom? Or maybe online you see that you can save $5 with a coupon, but in order for that coupon to work, what do you have to do? You have to redeem it. You have to use it, and it goes to pay for some of the cost of whatever it is you want to buy. So when you redeem something, you're paying for it. Well, God as Redeemer comes through here because, yes, he told Adam and Eve that they could no longer live in the garden. And he, he pushed them out of the garden and he closed the garden gates off with, with angels. And that no one would ever enter the garden of Eden ever again. But before he did that, he, the Bible says, clothed Adam and Eve in skin taken from an animal. Now, how do you get skin from an animal? You have to kill the animal. When you kill the animal, it bleeds. And that is the beginning of the history of blood in the Bible and how it's important. In fact, it says in the book of Hebrews, it says this, read it with me, in Hebrews 9, 22. It says, in fact, see, I told you, in fact, the law requires that nearly everything be cleansed with what? Blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. So an amazing thing happened when God took an animal and he killed it. He shed its blood, he took the coat from it, and he gave it to Adam and Eve, and he clothed them. That was his way of saying, I forgive you. It didn't make, the, it didn't make Adam and Eve perfect anymore. They were now sinners. And the Bible says that from then on, anybody who was born in this world is a born sinner. We have the want to do wrong. Say things wrong, think things wrong, you know, fight with our, our family, disobey our parents and just have bad thoughts now and then those things that break God's rules that's sin and the Bible says that we all are guilty of that and it started with Adam and Eve but it also says that God because he loves us he gave us a gift and when he gave us a gift what he did was he sent the Lord Jesus down to earth and Jesus grew up with a family but the day came when he said I must die but I'm going to be raised again the third day and I'll come back to life. And the reason he had to die was the Bible calls him the Lamb of God, the perfect Lamb of God. Read this verse with me out of 1 Peter 1, verses 18 and 19. It says, For you know that you were redeemed from the empty way of life, handed down to you from your ancestors, with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. In the Old Testament, God demanded from his people, the Israelites, a yearly sacrifice, a blood sacrifice. And it had to be a lamb. It had to be a, a very healthy lamb. It had to be something with no defect on it in order to be accepted. And then he sent Jesus, and Jesus became the lamb who was sacrificed once and for all. So we don't have to do those animal sacrifices anymore. God redeemed us when he sent Jesus to die on the cross. And here's another neat verse out of Ephesians. Read it with me. In him we have redemption through what? His blood. The forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. You want to know a really cool word? It's that word lavished. 
Now, I don't know about you, but I love ice cream. And I love putting ice cream in a bowl and then taking some of my caramel. And you think I just put a couple drops on there? No, I pour caramel all over my, I love caramel. I lavish my ice cream with caramel. It is so delicious. That's what lavishing means. It means just pouring and pouring and pouring and giving and giving and giving. God gave us this beautiful gift, grace. Jesus dying on the cross and he lavishes that grace on us day by day. So I have a question for you. I have a question for you that I, only you can answer. You and you alone. Not mom, not dad, not grandma, not grandpa, not anybody else, only you. Here it is. Have you been redeemed? Mr. Tim, I don't know what that means. It's as simple as this. When Jesus died on the cross, he died to pay for our sins. That paid the price. The redemption has been made. But we have to receive that gift. And the Bible says when we receive that gift, when we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died, that he was buried, that he rose again, and we believe on him, we receive the gift of God. Our sins are forgiven. We are redeemed. Now do you know if you've been redeemed? I hope so. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day, and thank you for these kids who are watching. Thank you for the parents who allow them to learn your word. Father, we thank you so much for the stories in the Bible that you give to us. And way back in the beginning, in Genesis, all the way back there, you showed us your great love. I'm sure you were disappointed when Adam and Eve sinned, but you had a plan, and that plan was Jesus the Lamb of God who would come and pay for the sins of the world. And we thank you for being our Redeemer, for paying for our sin. And I pray for any boy or any girl that is watching this very second, that they would know in their heart that you are in their heart, that you've forgiven them and that you have made them a part of your family. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we got a couple quick questions to talk about. Uh, the first one is a very easy one. What is a Redeemer? All right, we just talked about it. Hopefully, it's still fresh in your mind. Question number two, a little bit longer. What do you think God sounded like as he walked through the Garden of Eden? I don't know. What do you think? How about question number three? What is sin? If you don't know what sin is, look it up. But we talked about it, right? Anything that we think, say, or do that breaks God's law. Question number four. Who is the Lamb of God, and why is His shed blood so important? Take these questions, think about them, talk about them with your friends and your family, and hopefully you have a great year in school this school year. See you next time, guys.